Good morning. Nice to meet you all here. Uh, I'm Ruslan Dralce. I'm uh, currently working at Mellanox, leading the verification team of DBDK at uh, all, all the BMDs that we are providing at Mellanox. Uh, today I'll be presenting about the external buffer and the, some use cases that we really see that it's really important there for it, for the external buffer that, that, that we have in the inbuff. So, first of all, I will go over like uh, some small, let's say, historical, uh, historical overview of the external end buffer and when it was really uh, introduced. So, first of all, it was introduced by Olivier in the uh, summit of uh, 2016, and it, the first support for this external end buffer was introduced in DBDK 1805. So. Uh, let me explain a little bit about this external buffer and how it's really working and the current implementation that we really have for this external buffer. <coughs> uh, and even, like, this is from the presentation that we got, and I'm quoting here. So it's like, you can think of it like the inbuff itself is really pointing to some external data instead of the currently what we really have, that the inbuff, it embeds its data inside, like, in, inside the inbuff itself. So it could make sense that the data for the inbuff is really, we have it and reflect it into an external memory. Uh, we can think of a, a lot of uh, use cases like we have with virtual devices, server applications, storage applications, traffic generators, and I'll, I'll be showing an additional example about like GPU applications that are really in need for it. Uh, so how really, how external buffer really works? So. We can think of it like, like following. You have like a huge external buffer, which is going to be used for uh, data and uh, everything else about it. So you need to have something that's called external shared info. This is going to be, should be provided by, uh, by the user who's going to be using it. You can see inside of it, it has uh, a pointer to a callback function, which is called free callback. It's uh, it should to free the whole external buffer once the reference count for it is uh, getting into zero. Uh, like, as you can see here, there is a main point inside the inbuff that you have to add the oil flag of external attached inbuff for this, uh, for this inbuff. So how it really works. You have the function of the API, which is called bucket inbuff attached to external inbuff. As I mentioned, the shared info must be, must be provided. And this, is, this buffer is a user-managed buffer. So, there is some sort, as I mentioned, there is this, this shared info. There is some small API that is called shared info init helper. It will help you to initialize all of this uh, shared info. And it will just provide some small, uh, like let's say, small spare in this shared buffer, huge shared buffer, for you just to store this shared, uh, shared info structure, small structure. And it needs to add, once you attach an inbuff to an external inbuffer, it should add the external attached inbuff to this <coughs> to this structure to this uh, inbuff and there is also a must for like to reset the headrooms and you have an inbuff uh, an inbuff reset headrooms uh, function that we have here uh, so now let's assume that we got just attached it and we just want to deattach from the from an external inbuff what we will do is that we call the bucket inbuff deattach external buffer. It's the same as the bucket inbuff deattach, the regular one. And what it will do, it will just update the reference count for this inbuff to be uh, with minus one. And once it will reach for uh, zero, it will call the callback function, which is stored in the external shared, uh, <coughs> shared info. OK. OK, so I'll go over the use cases that I I really have here, I have actually two use cases for me. I'll start with the storage application. Uh, like, we can have, like, one single uh, shared buffer. It's a huge one. It's already loaded on the system. And this way, you can see that we have several inbuffs. They are all pointing to the chunk of buckets, like a chunk of memory. And these are all represent, each chunk of memory represents single data for a bucket. And this way, we will not need really to copy the whole data from this me from the memory itself that is already loaded to the inbuff itself. All that you really need to do is just to point to this data and just send the packet. Just that's it. You don't really need to do anything. 
uh, as you can see, the shared, uh, the, shared, uh, Im the shared info, it's only read-only, since it has the reference count more than, uh, more than one here. Uh, I'll go to another uh, sample, uh, sample usage for this, which is the GPU. OK, so the GPU are the graphic processing units. They are mainly used for accelerating, doing complex and time-consuming tasks, mainly. So typically, GPUs manage, doesn't really manage any packet sending or receiving. So only the data processing itself. <clears throat> so with the current implementation of the InBuff, what the GPU has to do is that it needs to copy all the data from the host memory to the GPU memory, and vice versa, in order for send to send and to receive. Now, the external inbuff, it will enable, for sure, a zero bucket copy from the GPU memory to the host memory and vice versa. So the whole, like the whole mempool will, 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 will like, sorry, the, the mempool on the host will just host some sort of, like, it will populate a, a, a list of inbuff descriptors OK, it, it's going to be only attaching to the buckets, uh, to the external buffer on the GPU. As you can see here on the, uh, on the uh, picture here, all the data will be directly sent to the GPU. So this way, you will just eliminate the need for the, all the copies and from the GPU to the host and vice versa. And in order just to, to verify that this is really worthy, we had like small BOC just to, to, sim to simplify things up here. We just had a small uh, testing using testbmd just to do some copying for the packets from the GPU memory to the host memory. And this is with single core and with some like four cores. We saw like the throughput really doubled when we moved to this external buffer. And the CPU cycles got like 200% improvement without when we eliminate the, uh, copy, the copying of the data. And this is only with single core. And once we move to the multiple cores, like with four cores, we got like around 600% improvement, especially with CPU, uh, with CPU cycles. So let, let's think, let's, we have a list of few things that we really need to think of as a future plan and future things. Like first of all, we have the indirect attached inbuff and external attached inbuff. These are two OL flags already, but they're not really part of an, any of loading flags. So they're not really floating. So I, I think we really need, need to think of like moving, move them to another place. I don't know, introduce a new thing or something like that. And I believe we have another open question, which is like, would it be better to have an explicit way to say that the inbuff is read only rather than what we really have now, which is like if the reference count was like greater than one, then this is only read only. Otherwise, it's read write uh, operation. So I believe that's it. Thank you all. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Hello. Uh, I have one question, I guess. I think I know the answer. But um, this doesn't change the size of the external buffer, does it? It's still limited to 64K minus 1? No, it's, it's not like that. So the inbuff itself, if, if you would like really to use this, uh, so you have to reserve like small inbuff descriptors you don't, since you don't need to use the data itself. You can, use, you can reserve whatever data size you want for the uh, for the shared uh, buffer itself, and just point to it, attached to this uh, inbuff. Okay, so the data length field that's in the inbuff at the moment doesn't. So there's a data length field which is a uint 16 at the moment uh, in the inbuff. So I thought that's uh, I'm not really still sure. used for that. I'm not really sure about that. I believe like the one who really maintained that is Olivier. He's sitting right uh, yeah, at we, the back. We can, ch we can, he can help a little bit. Like. Yeah. So w one uh, field was added in the in the MBUF, uh, the SH uh, shared info, it's a, which is a pointer to the descriptor uh, uh, that stores uh, the reference counter, the callback, and the opaque point pointer. But uh, it was already added uh, one or two versions uh, ago. So and it's a, it is still uh, two cache lines. Yeah, uh, if I could just follow up a bit on that, from my understanding. Each MBOF, yes, can only have a data length of uh, 64K minus one. But if you've got an external buffer, that one external buffer can be pointed to by any number of MBOFs. So if you've got a big block of data that's four gig in size, you could then set up a whole bunch of just MBOF headers 
and point to that one block. So you can take a bigger block, you need multiple headers, but you don't need to copy the data or split it up. You just have the buffer pointers pointing to uh, that, that would, that hopefully should work. <laughs> you still have to process multiple M buffs to yeah. find the real link. But you don't have to copy. Yeah, I was just going to say with Bruce, uh, if you look in the NetBSC Pomo driver, uh, there's a shared area with the hypervisor for the received data. And this, the hypervisor breaks it up into chunks of fairly big chunks. And then there's multiple M buffs that point to that chunk. So we'll get, and then obviously doesn't get returned to the hypervisor until it's all processed. Yeah, so you, you need multiple embuffs, but you don't have to copy. Should be, do, should be the solution there, I think. They, well, they could be, be independent or chained. It's up to the application. You just need, will need, each header cannot refer to more than 64K of data. Yep, yeah, chain or uh, you can just have them as individual headers in an array if you want either. I mean, it, it's up to your application. That's an application decision. Okay. Thanks, Russell. Thank you, guys. <laughs>